let's see. Click this. <laughs> okay, it's been a minute, but uh, we're here. Hopefully it sounds good. And uh, it's been so long, I don't know if anyone's still out there. But we'll try this anyway. So, uh, welcome to the Wild Pod. And uh, we've all met Sarah. Um, she, been a minute. Yeah, it's been a while. She's a, a ghost hunter. And um, uh, you do ghost hunting, demonology, um, kind of mediumship. What else do you do? I don't know. I don't even know anymore. It's been so long since I've done anything. <laughs> yeah. And it, we're looking at kind of a weird time lately with everything going on. But anyways, so Sarah reached out to me and said, I've got a crazy story. Oh, yeah. And I thought that'd be cool. Let's do a crazy story. So we're doing the story of uh what's the guy's name comte saint germain comte is that like his so it's basically like the french way of saying count comte 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 c-o-m-t saint c-o-m-t-e saint germain <laughs> now so uh, just lay it on me what's the story with this guy okay so this guy kind of has a very long standing. We don't know where he comes from. There's just all this weird stuff around him. Mm -hmm. Never really gives us his background, but yet leaves us with these like weird sort of half answered things when he's talking to people. It can go back from, depending on where you're reading it, can go back from like the time of Jesus. So he, to even like some say 300 and some say 1700 years. So there's no real definite thing, but it's just this rabbit hole of information. Once you start going down with this guy and how people think he's a vampire because of all this weird stuff that comes with it. So he just, uh, I, okay. So you had me look up beforehand. He was on like a talk show in France. Yes. In the seven. 70s. I want to say yeah, yeah, in like the 70s. 70s. Yeah, may as well be. And it is in French, so um, <laughs> we don't know what he's saying. I, I have an idea of what he's saying, but it's been so long since I've taken my French classes. Um, the really weird part. So he kind of starts popping up in literature with people actually communicating about this guy during the Jacobite uprising. So if you watch Outlander, you know all about the first two seasons What's and the Jacobite. Outlander? Oh, Outlander's a great show about I know time what Jacobins travel. are. <laughs> it's about time travel and, and the Scots. Um, uh-huh. Now, what's a Jacobite? A Jacobite was a Scotsman who wanted to return the throne of Scotland to, oh gosh, what was his name? I cannot think of it, but he was the prince of that time. Is it the Bruce time. guy? No, not the Bruce. It was uh, Bonnie Prince Charles, I think. Okay. Bonnie Prince Charlie. And so um, he ends up, this guy, uh, St. Germain, ends up in London. And he gets arrested because he's like trying to be part of this uprising. And of course, you know, the King of England's like, I don't like this. So we're looking at, you know, mid 1700s with this mm -hmm. and he's in jail, but they're like, his name's not real. He's got this uh, story that doesn't make sense. And it's all documented by this guy. I think his name is Warhol. And so he's writing about how this guy's really odd and he looks to be between 45 and 50 but they can't really get anything on him. And so he ends up leaving. And that's sort of where the first thing is. And then all of a sudden there's stories of him popping up all through Germany and uh, Italy and Mexico and all these things. And he speaks all these languages. He can do anything like this guy. You put him down in front of anything and you're like, can you oil paint? Sure. Can you play this musical instrument? Sure. He could speak Aramaic, Greek, 
Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, um, French, and he could do this all fluently, even Latin. So jack of all trades when it came to this. And all of a sudden, he pops up in France and he starts making friends with this guy called uh, Marigny, I think, M-A-R-I-G-N-Y. And he is sort of like the director of housing and th- buildings and stuff for the then king of uh, France, who was Louis the Fifteenth. So this would be, we all know who Marie Antoinette is. She's mm-hmm. the famous queen that got beheaded. This would be her grandfather-in-law. And he is having an affair at this time with this Mademoiselle uh, Pompadour. And... Anyways, she's this pompadour throwing a party, and there's this girl there called Von George, I think, Von Georgie, and she's like, you know, you look really familiar to this guy that I met when I was in Venice when I was a child, and you know, did your father was your father there? And he's like, no, you know that that wasn't my father, but I lived there during that time, and I remember you too. And she's like, how can that be possible? Because, you know, that was so many years ago and I was a little girl. And he knew all the details about their meeting when in Venice. Like he could describe little minute things that wouldn't, nobody would know that. Like, how would you know? And so the story sort of evolved of like, we believe him. We believe all the stuff he's telling us because there's no way he would know this. So this stuff is going back to... You know, like that recording in France is, what are we saying, the late 1600s? Uh, no, mid-1700s. Mid-1700s. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, Marie Antoinette, her grandfather? In-law. Grandfather-in-law, so King Louis. the fifteenth. Yeah, Louis's grandfather. hmm And he's in his court, and a girl's... I know you from there. What's the oldest kind of, I don't know, story of this guy? Probably the one we were talking about where he was in London and the Jacobite uprising is kind of where it first starts. But there's stories of this guy like written by Voltaire, yeah. by uh, Casanova. Really? And like, like these people are all throughout <laughs> history and yet these stories are popping up. And... So when he's on that show that we do have on the YouTube, Mm -hmm. he's even talking about how supposedly, again, I I was kind of reading what he said in French to English, but he's talking about how Madame Pompadour and Louis XV are both still around. They never died. He, um, there's this group of people that have taken this elixir of life that he has created because he's a like Scientologist or not Scientologist, but he's a scientist and alchemist. Mm -hmm. And so Louis the 15th gives him permission to stay in this uh, castle de Chambord and to develop a laboratory. And he has people coming there. He has his own um, assistance and everything to help him. And he can somehow turn things like lead into gold. He can fuse diamonds together in a way that you would never be able to tell that that diamond didn't come like that. Mm -hmm. And he was known for walking around and just covered in diamonds. He never carried money on him. And he would just be like, here's a diamond. Just pluck a diamond. Just pluck a diamond. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) And so there's just all these really weird stories. Now, he disappears for 12 years. Mm -hmm. pops back up and is like, hey, I want to speak to Marie Antoinette. And everybody was like, where did you come from? You look the same age. We've all aged. And if you've seen the Marie Antoinette photos of her looking like an old lady, she was 30. When they beheaded her, she was in her 30s. She was young. She was very young. And so they aged differently back then. Mm -hmm. Um, especially the stress of things were just different. So he had not aged at all and he comes in and now it's talking about how he knew things. Like he was like, Hey, you're going to be beheaded if you guys don't stop this. And of course it was like, you know, okay, sure. You know, the future. 
everything he predicted in that meeting ended up coming true because Mm -hmm. as we know there was an uprising and she was beheaded so he's now also telling the future he knows things that he shouldn't know so what is his claims what is is he saying that he lives this long because of this elixir he creates or is He's very mysterious because he never really gives you the true thing of what's going on. It's always these little bits of pieces. But it all comes down to the same thing is multiple people throughout history and even people throughout their lifetime are meeting this man. Mm. And he stays the same age. He does not eat. He likes to drink something red. He never eats. And so it does mention that he drinks <laughs> it blood. Does. Really? Let's let's move forward, and I'll yeah. get to that because that well, part's really let's weird. Let's take a real quick minute. Hey, <laughs> King, good to see you on here. Um, uh, Casanova two times was a brutal in uh, BX area. All right, I someone else can tell me, um, and then also Bundo Bushwick. And why as well. So was this guy in Bushwick, New York? Bushwick's a, like a little area in New York, isn't it? I don't know. I think it's kind of a, an area. Mundo, vampire maybe. We're getting to that right now. Okay, yeah. vampire stuff. Tell me. All right. So now we're about 1912. Mm-hmm. And it's New Orleans. And he lives... So 1912, 1912, we're talking the automobile just showed up a couple of years before man is flying a little bit. Uh, World War one starts in two more years. He's in new Orleans, He's in new Orleans. And so we're talking about 1039 Royal street. Uh Um, that's a very famous street and uh-huh. it's known for having these mansions that have, you know, two to three stories. He is having these wild parties inviting all of like the rich people. Really? So he's, so wherever he goes, it seems like he's a socialite. Oh yeah. Because I mean, it's not like uh, meeting the king in France and you know, uh, late six or early uh early 1800s or late 1700s is mm-hmm. something that everyone does mm-hmm. so that's that's you know yeah that's a big deal well and if you think about it if you lived forever would you want to be you know cleaning up the pigs or whatever well, it is you just... want to be hanging out with the people who like worked for you if or you did lived things. forever and you still did that you broke something somewhere in your life Mm -hmm. because like you're saying a a minute ago how he had all these talents he could oil paint and sculpt or or whatever you know whatever talents i mean that'd be what you'd end up doing is you would slip and slide out of different talents yeah and especially with being fluent in all these languages he could Mm -hmm. just pop in and out where he wanted and really just maneuver through all sorts of aristocratic kind of, you know, places. Yeah, it makes you wonder if you had a ship called the Demeter or something. <laughs> that was a good movie, by the way. <laughs> Haven't seen it, but I know that that was the name of it in the, in the book. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so he's having these parties with all the people. And they're like, that's weird that he never eats. He's throwing parties, but we never see him have food. Like, it's just weird. But he's always drinking, again, this red thing, this he's red always, wine. He always has a, a glass of, of that warm, sticky, mm-hmm. icky red wine. Yes. And he's known for sort of not really being with women, but more so that he liked to go to the prostitute area and pick up these women and bring them home. And then always, wherever he is, no matter what time period, there's always these mysterious disappearances of more people than usual. Like prostitutes, like, oh. Right, because you're gonna pick on the people that nobody would really wanna mess with. Well, yeah, you would would go after 
Um, Who's would, gonna care if they're gone? Well, right? it's not even who would care, but people <laughs> who are already in a hazardous workplace, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. So and so. So he'd go and get a prostitute. Go they get would a prostitute. Disappear. So he, of course, you know, during this time, it's not like the police really are, you know, watching him or anything, right? Because he's got lots of money. He's. Mm-hmm. He's such a nice guy, like whatever. And they'd only see him at nighttime, but whatever. And how are the police going to go after him if he hangs out with royalty? Yeah. You know, 1912, he's eating dinner with Teddy Roosevelt. The police <laughs> are going to steer clear of that. Yeah. And so um, they're, they're even asking him things like, for example, uh, back in France, that little girl I was talking about, that Von Georgie, mm-hmm. her and her mother were like, well, tell us about your mother. And he's like, I had a price on my head. I was seven years old. My mother gave me a photo of her, which I keep on me. He said this? He said this. And he goes, but I was never allowed to see her again. And he lifts it up and shows him, you know, his arm. And he's got this little portrait of her where it's just kind of, I don't know, a bracelet or something. Mm-hmm. And... They said she was very beautiful, but she was wearing clothes that were not of that period and it didn't make sense. And they were like, where are you from? Like, when was this taken? And he just changes the subject because he doesn't like to talk too much about himself. So, like I said, he gives these interesting so tidbits. he likes being in the shadows. Mm-hmm. So, either this is a real guy or there's multiple people. Like one person begin this hoax and just kept it going. So centuries. I want, yeah, I want to take a minute and... Uh, you talked about the photo and the attire. And you know how you can order the picture of yourself dressed as like a, a duke or whatever? <laughs> yeah, I want to do that. Imagine in a thousand years when someone does archaeology and they find a picture of you dressed like a duke. And then you, I don't know, standing next to your, you know, 87 cutlass. And they've got a, you know figure that out in their brain we might be starting something funny with that but anyway sorry just a side note well moving forward we'll go back to new orleans yeah so he's got this you know mansion this woman jumps out of the second third story and so she jumped from a very high level onto the ground she's bleeding from her neck and she sounds crazy, um, but because she was like a prostitute, it was, eh, we don't care. And they took her to the hospital, but she's telling them, he went mad, he attacked me and bit my neck. Was she a prostitute? Was she- I, a, I believe so. A lady of ill repute? Kind of, yeah. So they, they took her to the hospital, but it was kind of like, she's alive, we know. So, uh, okay, yeah. And also it wasn't, you know, I mean, if that happened today, He'd be done. But back then, wasn't quite as equal. Mm -hmm. So he started getting the prostitutes again. He attacked her. And she, you know, maybe that was his MO, is he would take them to the third floor so that they were trapped, right? All he had to do was block a door. And she jumped out a window. Yeah, she made it out. So she dies. In the hospital? She dies in the hospital days later. And at this point, they're like, mm, maybe we should go Does and investigate. Does she die from her injuries? Mm-hmm. Okay, so she didn't die because, like, she's in the hospital recovering. They've got the plaster cast on. She'll be okay. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, she's... No, it's because ex- of her neck injury. Oh. Tell me about this. Like, it broke her neck when she No, because he bit her. Oh, she's so, bleeding. Yeah. Okay. That's so, why I was saying she had blood coming out of her neck and she was like he bit me he was crazy so he he attacked and bit her Mm -hmm. and she died from blood loss Mm -hmm. days later in the hospital oh so now at this point the police were like maybe we should probably go check it out we got to investigate a little bit citizens are going to be on us they go in there and he's nowhere to be found he has mysteriously vanished nobody saw him flee in the middle of the night Back on the SS Demeter. Something. But they find all these clothes from centuries. Like, why does he have a 1700s thing and an 1800s? You know, it's that didn't make How sense. How crazy is So this day, here's what I'm picturing playwright in this. 
he pops down to the shop, you know, for for a can of of a, a soda pop or whatever they called it back then, right? Mm-hmm. And he's walking back, and the police carriages are out in front of his house, so he just turns around and walks off. I mean, he's probably got money everywhere. Oh, what would yeah. he be concerned with? Well, he but said he could just make anything. He, could he turn lost lead all to gold. those clothes, you know. Yeah. I mean, they're probably sentimental value. Probably, uh, you know. And that was the thing they would say he he dressed simply and understated, but yet well enough. Like it was just he just blended in. So he dressed he dressed classy but subdued. Yeah, I don't. It's like I I want to have nice things, but I don't want to be super noticed. Mm-hmm. Just, you know. Yeah. So, amongst all the clothes and everything, this is the other weird part. They found tons of bottles of what they thought was wine. Now, what do you think they found when they opened the wine to drink it? Oh, I had a penny smell. It was all blood. All human blood. (laughs) So, they're like, he doesn't eat. He has bottles of blood. This woman's saying he attacked him all night. He doesn't age. There's stories of him forever. This is weird. And he's and you said earlier he says there's a group of them. Mm-hmm. And who else in this group? Um, so Louis the Fifteenth, he claims is still alive in okay. his broadcast when he is in French, uh, as uh, Richard Chambray is what he goes by at this point. Uh huh. But he claims I am the Comte de Saint Germain. Imagine if Louis the Fifteenth is still alive. He just says he's lying, living in France, it's lying in low, France. just being yeah. quiet. And he says that on TV, and Louis just drinking his morning coffee. I'll bet Louis spit that up was pissed. Well, they said also uh, that Von Georgie girl was in there as well as. So he, she's like the the little vampire girl on that creepy vampire movie from the nineties. Oh yeah, uh, so the interview with a vampire, and if you look yeah. at that, there's a lot of things where you can see where she did kind of so New Orleans, right? Uh huh. The violin, he was really well playing that, hanging out with rich people and just getting his way. Like, all of that. So the lady that there. wrote that, uh, Anne, Rice. Anne Rice, she's just copying. Yeah, she's I mean, well, that's what we gaps. do, right, is we take well, yeah. things and do that. Oh. Um. So that Von Georgie, I think it is. So he supposedly also brings her on to this thing in the 70s. And he's like, this is her. And there's all these people that are agreeing that it is her. Was she young or? And she constantly remained at age 25. Oh, so that's not that young. I, that'd be okay. You freeze me at 25, I'm, I'm okay with it. You freeze me at eight, we're going to have some problems. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be like that girl on that vampire movie. I'm going to become a little psycho. Yeah, that would be the whole thing. That would that would be awful. Yeah, but there's like all these people who like even when Marie Antoinette was beheaded, they like looked over and they're like, "Oh my gosh, there he is," and he hasn't aged. He's still between forty five and fifty. The Saint Germain guy. The Saint Germain guy. I I wonder, I wonder how that went down with Louis because they beheaded him. Yeah. Did they? Did he? I mean, you could foresee him saying, you know, I'm going to get a uh, an impersonator and have them behead him, and I'm going to sneak away, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I had never read any reports on it would be when they beheaded back, him. Back then, it would be so easy to have somebody that looked like you, you know, just to kill him, to replace him, to whatever, put him in the coffin. Yeah. Because how back then they didn't really, there was no real autopsies, and even oh, if yeah. there was, there wasn't blood typing, there wasn't all that stuff yet. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, you just got to get someone with enough of the facial feature to pass. Mm-hmm. You know, and then, I mean, of course, nowadays they're saying, what's the latest one that Jamie Fox is a oh a clone is, or is a robot clone or an actor or yeah. robot or. Yeah, Maybe some of that alien. stuff's really weird. There's a new one with Bill Gates and his wife. What? What's what? What is? Where they died, I think, in the '90s. Yeah. And it shows them in the '90s and them today, and they're completely different people, but still look similar. Really? Mm-hmm. I've never looked Especially at that. Especially now, the him wife. and his wife. Yeah. They split. I don't know. No, they divorced. Did they? Yeah, I think it had something to do with, uh, with, uh, you know, he liked to hang out with. Uh, Epstein a little yeah, bit, yeah. you know, 
But I don't know, Bill Gates. I mean, not that he was ever a good guy. That bastard's pretty evil right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, he wants to release mosquitoes, and and he, he he's saying we need to cut down trees for the climate, which sounds weird to me because. I thought if CO2 was the issue, breeze, trees breathe CO2. But anyways, <laughs> but what if they did? What if Yeah. What if there's like this group? What if you get like if you're stumble on it or or you're wealthy enough that you get into this club and then they you know. Yeah, and and that's part of the stuff he's talking about in that interview. Is he's even talking about the head of the Knight Templars is mm-hmm. part of this group. And so that was way back. That's, that's yeah. What are we talking? 1300s? Yeah. So he, there's, like I said, they can't really track where he comes from, but there's all these weird things. And because he looks alike, he never ages. Oh my gosh. And um, even like Taylor Swift, they said she looks like. Oh, yeah. You know, but, so there's like a whole okay. thing of these people all right. that could I was be. an unbeliever. You said Taylor Swift. I'm a believer now because, <laughs> yeah, she's got a hold on people Mm -hmm. like i heard that at her concert was a couple weeks ago that her concert was busy enough that it set off the richter scales the oh in california the um earthquake earthquake sense and stuff Mm -hmm. so that's you know the san andreas is going to be california is going to be busted in half and slip off into the ocean because of a taylor swift concert that's what we're saying right now (laughs) well i don't know that but they i guess there was like a high priestess in the 90s who wore like the same kind of makeup looks exactly like her and a lot of people are claiming that that is her really yeah Oh, oh, oh so it's weird if you go and look down that rabbit hole there's a whole nother thing so that uh, that is what if there is like this you know, I mean, I know you guys thought you came to a show that wasn't going to dive into conspiracy today. But what <laughs> if there is this like underlying, um, eternally unaging rulers, there could or, be. or or maybe not even rulers? Um, like we don't even have to go into them being in charge. Although there was this guy on Joe Rogan the other day that had some freaky story, but. Um, just that they, that they, uh, I don't know, not parasite, but they're just so advanced that they, they live this super charmed life because of it. Yeah. But would Bill Gates have been one before he became the computer guy or did he get it because of his wealth? Yeah, those are all good questions. Because, Um, I mean, now Taylor Swift, the hard one with that is we've watched her age a little bit. Because she kicked off when she was, what, 17, 18? Yeah, yeah. Um, But maybe, I don't know, unless they just replace Taylor Swift with one of them. I don't know. That's interesting. It is. And there's a whole rabbit hole. Like I said, this thing is just, the more you got into it, the more you were just like, wait, what? How is all of this? I mean, they claimed he was at the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Yeah. They claimed that he um, was part of the Russian, you know, Catherine the Great, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So he's showing up in all these political things as well. But then the fact that we have Voltaire and Casanova and this uh, Warhol and Von Georgie, like all these people, and there's a big book of biography that you can go and read where it talks about all of this. Like, I'm just going off the basis of so what I got. it's just him in this whole book that... Through the, through the centuries. Through the ages. Yeah. So, and that would make sense. Okay, let's uh, war game this. <laughs> if I was a vampire, you know, looking to do my sinister things at night, I would go to places where there's political upheaval. Yeah. Because that or wartime, and like right now, the dude's living in Ukraine. Because people can disappear there and... and Who would be the wiser? Yeah, it's easier to slip under the radar. Yeah. You know? 
And what's weird is they have all these two reported deaths. So when he was in Russia, they said, well, he, he died and there's a death certificate. However, no body was ever seen. Uh, Richard Chambray, they claim, committed suicide, but yet it was that's in Mexico. The, this is the guy in the 70s. The guy from... But yet, yeah. where's the body? And so there's just these weird... Like, he just keeps reappearing every 50 years or so where, like, nobody knows. So he <laughs> just know? scrubs out and then probably, you know, gets a good insurance payout and pops up somewhere else as a new yeah. guy. Yeah. Never gains, like, full citizenship anywhere he goes. Just... No paperwork, just slips in and slips out. Yeah, why would you need to? Mm. If you had enough money to do whatever you wanted, what you know? I'm I'm going to pull up a picture, but this is that's a wild story. Yeah, I'm just I'm waiting for, and they even um, what's weird are there's, there's these cults dedicated to him also. Like in San Francisco, there is a vampire cult, and they even have donors who give their blood for these people, and. That, well, to me, is just like a whole nother part of it. Now, we've been down this path before on this show, but you've heard of the, um, oh, there's the L.A. Cannibal Club. Mm. Have you heard of them? Yeah. And then there's also this online thing where you can sign up to, uh, I'm going to just lay this picture up there. So this is the... The early French guy, and this is the new guy. And in this picture, you know, you have one who's looking to the right, and the other one's looking more to the left and a little bit straight. And so it's going to be different, well, okay. too, on the perspective wanna, of the painter. Yeah, one's a painter, the other one's a photo. But I want to mention, that guy's got a crooked nose in both of them. Mm -hmm. His nose has a little bit of right English, as the pool, say, pool players would say, right? Mm-hmm. And... In the video, when he's looking more in the direction of the painting, you can see it a little bit more. Yeah. Um, I think it was just because the video is so grainy, it's so old. Yeah, but I mean, the nose mm -hmm. looks like it'd be so... Now, the thing, the mouths, I mean, but one of his mouth is only kind of open. I don't know. That'd be interesting. But one is a painting. Yes. I mean, sadly enough. And this enough, is, this is what we know, too, is like, for example, Queen Charlotte, you have where somebody painted her looking more black and somebody painted her looking more white. Who's Queen Charlotte? Um, she was married to the crazy King George who like kind of went off as rocker and they based a Bridgerton off of her on Netflix. Um, but she... Reportedly, they said, well, she has black features, and so they're calling her the first black queen. Really? But they also say it's the person who painted it. It's their perspective, so it's going to look different than a photograph. Might have been a person that, I don't know, wanted to accentuate those features. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Give her a big butt and more rhythm. I mean, you know, why not? That was wrong. That was wrong. I don't know about that, but, <laughs> but it's, it's it's a very interesting thing. And, you know, around that time, I believe, is when they started having a lot more um, getting around the slaves and giving them rights and all that stuff in England. So it would kind of make sense so that, that they were... So that was kind of a draw. Because yeah. England, I mean, they did a lot for the uh, abolition of slavery. Mm-hmm. You know, they they did a. I mean, they did it a lot earlier than us. Well, it's and not so just that; it's undeniable. It is. They forced the they forced the hand of the Atlantic slave trade. Yeah. Because they sent their ships out to, um, to stop and patrol the Atlantic for slaver ships and wouldn't allow it to happen anymore. Mm -hmm. So they took world policing onto their shoulders, which I'd argue yeah. is a good thing. It is. I'm sure at the time there was the same argument that you hear every time a uh, nation takes on world policing. But, you know, hindsight, I didn't have to pay for it or live through it. So I guess I can't, you know, let's read a couple comments real quick. King says, lots of body doubles taking people's place. And then we're talking about Taylor Swift. She's doing retails in her concerts What's retails? 
Rituals, probably. Rituals. Doing yeah. rituals I, in their concerts. I have heard that, that there is witchcraft rituals and that people are leaving and they have no idea, like they no memory of what happened. Remember that Travis Scott concert? No. Where he was doing the concert in Arizona and all those, like, nine people died? No, I don't think I remember. Um, he's married to one of the Kardashians because, you know, they... Oh, you mean... Um, isn't it Travis Scott? That's his it's name. Not, I don't, not Travis Scott. Scott's is her first. It's Travis... It is Travis. Travis and Courtney... Sorry, I think it starts with a B. Anyways. Anyways. <laughs> they were... He's got some ritualistic stuff going on. His albums and his... All the other well, it's it's prevalent. It's any anything in those industries, think, whether it, even if it's just McDonald's, for example, you can go through and you're like, okay, well, this is how. I think the Kardashians are demons and possessed people. I'm just gonna throw it out there. Yeah, well, I think I mean, most of how's Kanye doing right now? Mm-hmm. Uh, he's he's his own thing. <laughs> yeah, well, I think uh, I think Kim spun him out, and now Kanye's you know he he spun out. Kim really got a hold of that guy. And then you've got uh, the basketball player guy who went down to the brothel in Nevada and and baked his brain. Mm. And uh, and then you've got, oh, what's that other guy's name? That, oh, we don't even have to go too far. We can just look at uh, um, Caitlyn Jenner. Mm. You know, yeah. I think the Kardashians. I don't know. I don't know. I... Well, yeah. they do say there's a curse for any men that get involved with them. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure that, what's her mom's name? Uh, oh, gosh, Chris. Oh, yeah, I'm sure she, uh, I want, well, yeah, mm-mm. yeah, I'm sure she's not mixing a cauldron as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Because everyone, everyone that touches them, you know, their dad, I mean, well, I think his revenge was for defending O.J. Simpson, but... You know, they all, yeah. Yeah, anyway, sorry. Go on with St. Germain. Uh, I mean, I think that is pretty much it. I don't know, that's... Uh, that's but that in itself is... So where where is... So he's not popped up right now, supposedly... As far as I know. He died in Mexico. Mm-hmm. But have you looked into, like, the gaps between when he pops up? Like, when he goes to lay in the coffin for a decade or two... It's really hard to find good information on him. I, I do want to read that book that mm-hmm. is out because supposedly that's a first hand. I think it's that little little girl or her mother wrote it from France. Um, mm. And I could be completely wrong. Like I said, I'm trying to remember all this in your head and you have notes and it's. Yeah. Well, I made it a point not to look this up. I wanted to. I wanted the fun shock so that I could enjoy uh, hearing about it the first time like you and let my mind wander. Yeah. But, so, I mean, that'd be crazy. Like, if you was to look into it, say there's, you know, 80 years between each pop-up, well, we won't have the the opportunity to see it. Well, I won't. You might, but we'll have the opportunity to see him again. But if we're looking at, like, an average of 40 or 20 years or something, you know, that'd be cool to keep an eye out for him. Yeah. Yeah, it really would. What do you think about Mexico wheeling out the aliens a couple of weeks ago? You know, I, I, it looked more like a calcified stone, and I don't know, because I would have thought they would have cleaned up around the arms or something, but it was all one piece, and I just thought this was really, mm. really odd to me. Okay, okay. I'm just wondering, do you think Mexico's like, you know... Let me get on that train. The Congress up in America's <laughs> having too much fun. we got to jump on that bandwagon. I don't know. I kind of, my, my dad, so we were watching uh, something about where they're talking about alien abductions. And he's like, well, I live there. I live there. I live there. And I'm like, please don't tell me that you have any weird memory or something. He goes, well, I do have this memory of being in my backyard when I was a little boy. And like, I was trying to run to my house and I was scared, but then everything froze and I started elevating and I'm like, oh gosh. And I'm like, please <laughs> No, I don't want to be involved with aliens. I just, I, that is my, do you think the aliens would, um, because they had your father that they like want to go down the family line? 
I think there could be. Yeah. Really? I don't know enough about it, but I know I don't want to be part of it. You know, it's something where I would like to be in control. So if they're somehow taking people, wiping their memory because it's either too traumatic or whatever, and they're able to stop time, make things float or whatnot, I don't want any part of that. What do you think the aliens are doing? You know, I probably the same thing we do with animals. That would be my guess. Yeah. Oh. Anything we do with animals, right? Because, because what we we biopsy them, we get their skins, we do test on them, we mm. do testing. Like aliens are doing lab rat stuff on yeah, us. Yeah, why not? Like the alien drops down and sp- sprays Mars flu in your face. <laughs> They're like, look and what then, happened to this one. And then they used to, they sneakily come down every day and take notes well because what That's if our what the dna little is, thing in your rear end is for it's a thermometer yeah what if our dna is so close to theirs that they're testing things on us right because that's what we do with animals is we say hey like let's see how this product will do wake up they forgot to wipe the make off makeup off and yeah they did some makeup testing on you got like this gray eye shadow <laughs> <laughs> green You're like how did how did that happen but then the other thing goes back to are they demons because there's a lot of people that's, believe that now that's Jacques Vallée that's his whole thing if you look at the uh, levels of angels and you can relate that obviously to the same amount of uh, levels of angels would be the same amount of levels of demons mm-hmm. there are certain angels well, no, same that amount. can stop be time one third of demons mm-hmm. and two thirds angels no. apparently according to the bible right mm-hmm. one third of the host rebelled right oh so if they're demons why do they have UFOs I don't know all those answers that's a, I, that's a whole Right, it's a whole thing. And and if you wanted to go back into the whole alien thing and all of that, uh, apparently the Saint Germain claimed that he was from Atlantis, but also from an alien on, thing on Mars. And there's a subterranean thing down on Mars. That so you he go, went like, deep. He went deep. In when the did 70s. he claim this? In what iteration did he claim this? This was on that, that interview in the 70s. On that interview. On that okay. interview. And supposedly part of that interview, and I don't know if this interview is the whole interview, if they cut it off, you know, I have no idea. But they were claiming that he said, hey, I want you to, to do exactly what I say and I'm going to show you that I'm telling the truth. And so they took lead, turned it into gold by somehow dipping it into this powdery stuff that it just somehow did it. And they ended up doing the measurements of like, well, it would be the same measurements as different measurements or whatever. And they found out it was the same measurement of the lead. The lead had disappeared. (laughs) And so he didn't even touch it and he just told him how to do it. And supposedly he, later they talk about, well, he got into mysticism He could, he, you know, hung out in the Himalayas. He went to India. He knows all these things. He can disappear in front of you. He can levitate. He glides like that. These are just really weird things that they're talking Mm. about with this guy. And so I don't know. It's like, is he or isn't he? Or is it just some person, you know, for example. Or or multiple people. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, who is it? The guy from, I think, Oasis claimed that he was... Guy from Oasis, the yeah, band? Yeah, the band claimed that he was the reincarnation, I think, of John Lennon. And if it wasn't him, there was somebody that did it, but... I, I know he certainly thought he was, even if he wasn't. But how can you be the reincarnation if John Lennon was still alive when you were born? <laughs> so there's uh, these weird, yeah. like, are you just crazy? Or are you... Well, that's, there's a big question on the crazy side. So if someone is crazy, but let's say they make great music or a great artist or whatever, would you kind of just let them continue to be crazy so that that art is out there? I mean, that's what uh, the Beach Boys, that one guy, he had a psychiatrist that became his manager to do that. Really? To just like make money off of them. W- really? Mm-hmm. Well, also, I mean, yeah, which was, it was their, was it their drummer, or their guitarist? Which one was it? I, yeah, uh, I'm not good but with he, he, he also hung out with the little Charles Manson. Yeah, and that's, you know what, that is, I was thinking about that. I said, this guy reminds me of somebody, and that's who he reminds me of. That. He reminds you of 
Chuck Manson. Huh? Something about, yeah, something about him. That's was just it the what way he, he talked in French? He was it's real. Just the way that kind he, of intense. I don't know. It's just a vibe I was getting of just like he's not somebody. You know, like if you see somebody walking towards you and you get that vibe of like, you know what? Just turn around and go back to your car and lock the doors. Uh-huh. That's the vibe I get. Mm. But at the same time, it's very fascinating. And you're like, I want to watch. I want to know. Tell me more. Wonder, yeah. And isn't that the whole thing, right? Count Dracula. It's a whole oh, yeah. story of like, he was very charming. And yet. Mm-hmm. Well, he was super wealthy. He was very influential. But yet um, did these horrible things. And yet you wanted to be a part of it. Oh. And imagine if you're like thousands of years old, you're going to know how to seduce a moron. Mm-hmm. Right, you're gonna know how to sweet talk someone into your chateau, and and so you can fill the wine bottle with blood. Yeah. Oh, that is insane. Yeah. I wonder if. Uh, so he's saying he had an elixir. Was the elixir made of blood, or was blood like, just? I have no idea, right? Because he never gives his full story. It's that could have just, just been a details. perversion he got. He got bored with life one night and said, "I'll start drinking blood." Uh, yeah, I. That or. But you know, our stomachs um, can't actually digest blood. Like we can have a little bit, but not. It's like the size of a thimble. Really. And so, what would be the point of having a full bottle if you can only have? What will it do? Will it like make you sick or something? Yeah, it makes you throw up and you can't digest it. So it's and that going back to the whole the vampires of San Francisco where it's like a whole occult thing. Uh huh. And they have these donors who are giving their blood for people to drink a thimble of their blood every day because they want to be a vampire so bad. It's just weird to me. There are some weird people out there. And then it's, you know, is it because fantasy, our lives are so chaotic and stuff that we have to go dive into this fantasy nah, world and become a little crazy ourselves? I think it's because we've dominated the earth and wolves no longer peel a couple people yeah. off the herd every year. Yeah. I think once survival is required, the weird stuff goes away. Once you're mm-hmm. comfortable, it stays weird. And you know... It, it, so we have this person who's reportedly lived since the time of Jesus in mm-hmm. one account. And I'm to the point now, I'm entering my 40s, and the things I wanted in my childhood, I no longer am that crazy about. You know, mm-hmm. I don't want fame and fortune. I just want a farm in the middle of nowhere where I don't have to socialize. Mm-hmm. And so it makes you think why would he keep continuing with this path? Because I have changed my mind so much in just the 40 something years, years I've been alive that what society tells me I should want, I have no interest in. That's a good question. But what if his lifestyle requires he live that wealthy lifestyle so he can kind of be a little bit above the law? Mm, It could. Cause I mean, one, be kind of get kind of expensive to pill prostitutes off the herd i'm just saying that right now right you True. know um that that can be cheap and oh and here's the thing jack the ripper right so this guy's that, name is jacques that popped into my mind when you De said Saint it germain and guess what he's killing off prostitutes he's yeah. got he knows how to move in and out of society but like there could be a whole thing there jack the ripper seems to me like a a, a sadist because what he did he would mutilate the bodies and then mm-hmm. kind of put them on display um now maybe that was a phase that uh, that uh that a count of Germain went through, but Could be. you know, but he seems like they just disappear, you know, without a trace, mm-hmm. no, no ties back to him. You know, maybe he just got bored and said, I, you know, yeah, there's not a lot going on right now. I think I'll go be a weirdo for a minute. Yeah. And I don't know. I'd like to see a photo of, for example, just famous people throughout history who they're like, we know that this person did it, but they disappeared because even Jack the Ripper is reportedly supposed to be that guy that owned the mansion or hotel. Or um, there was the head surgeon at whatever college Mm -hmm. 
that they're thinking it's him. And then there's also a prince in the mix. Now, what's that lady who writes books where she investigates old crimes? Oh, uh, Agatha Christie? No. Cornwall. I don't know. I think her last name's Cornwall. She thinks it was the surgeon. She says it ties back to this. If I remember, I read a book one night about it. But, I mean, that's all interesting, wild stuff. Though, do you think Jack the Ripper could get away with something like that today? I think if he was able to sneak around through centuries and knows exactly what he's he's doing. this guy... Yeah, no problem. And if you have all the time in the world, you can learn. Ev- like he knows everything. And That's why he was that, able to slip in and out, and so he would know everything. If you're international, super wealthy, you don't care if you almost get caught. Yeah, and there are people who are wealthy enough. And then if you're, to where we don't care because they're not wealthy, you know, they're wealthy yeah. enough to do what they want, but not wealthy enough that we care. There are people out there like that, and I would think he would fall into that category of, I'm here, but I'm not here. Yeah, and and I mean, if you're that wealthy, if you almost get caught and you're essentially eternal, just take the first opportunity to escape. Mm-hmm. I need to put a picture of him next to Jeffrey Epstein, though. I got to do some side by side. Just because Epstein, his story is creepy as hell. I Though I have my own beliefs on what Epstein was, but, you know, I think you, if you... If you, without questioning at all, think he committed suicide, yeah, I mean, he may have. But if you're buying into that without going, maybe, uh, yeah, I think you, your sheep dipped deep. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, that guy, he, he was the wealthiest investment banker out there. Yeah, we don't know who he investment banked for. Yeah. Had no ledgers, none of that. Mm, all right, CIA didn't make you at all. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But yeah, that's wild. And if you go to um, New Orleans, they have all these places dedicated to him, and you can get Dedicated the- to him, the historical figure, or dedicated to him- what we're well, like the histor- the story, the folklore. So, like, there's the St. Germain's bar, there's the St. Germain drink, there's the St. Germain food. And it's just kind of, like, revolved around this, like, folklore of... Revolved around the guy who lives forever and went mm-hmm. everywhere. And if you go and... This this is the... F- okay, Nicolas Cage is a vampire. You've heard this story, right? I have not. Do, do, uh-uh. We've got to go into this. You can go and find an old historic photo of a guy that looks like Nicolas Cage and therefore uh-huh. they think Nicolas Cage is a vampire. He doesn't really seem to age or he ages slower than what is normal. Mm-hmm. So Nicolas Cage was living in New Orleans. Guess the house he was living in. That guy's house. Oh yeah. So <laughs> if it's, it's like not a- creepy enough. And he has already built himself his what do you call that? A vault, tomb, whatever for where it's a pyramid. In one of the cemeteries there for where he's going to be buried. Nicholas Cage Nic- did? Nicholas Cage did. He built a pyramid There's for a, his... It's a white pyramid, and it's like human size, and it's going to be where really? he's going to be put. And so there's it goes back to, like, is he a vampire? <laughs> he's living in this vampire. How many side. people like could there be? Taylor Swift, Nicholas Cage. Uh, Jay-Z. That's supposed Jay-Z. to be one. Um, what's the... The guy that does the box with the Timberlake, Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon. There's one of him. So there's there's just different ones. Really? I don't know. It's weird. Um, I mean, I look like my family members, but I don't look enough like them to where you're like, oh, that's a, the same person. Yeah. Well, and not just that, but you don't look enough like great, great, great grandma to go, wait a minute. Yeah. Right? The only thing I have is the nose and that's it. Mm-hmm. That's wild. <laughs> I wonder, what if they're like a family? So, so this guy on Joe Rogan the other day said, he brought up a conspiracy theory or a folklore theory that that there kind of goes with the, the civilizational crashes that we have, like, you know, around 1,200 years ago is when we had the last one. Um, and he talks about how there is a 
coexisting race that are human enough to pass, but they're they hunt humans. They're smart enough, smarter, and then they go to, into hibernation for you know twelve thousand years or whatever. And I'm like, oh, that's too deep. But now you got me thinking. What if they're just damn vampires? What if? Yeah. What if one or two of them pop out just for a hundred year tour of the tour of the world, you know? And then he goes back to their, their like the I'm, I'm picturing their their meeting room, you know? They've got coffins lined up in a semicircle around a round altar that, you know, weird stuff on the wall. They bring back souvenirs, You're like Taylor Swift is going to bring back her microphone from her biggest concert, and and. I, I mean, Nicolas Cage, I don't know what he'd bring back. It probably wouldn't be a copy of that. Uh, Jennifer Lawrence, that's another one. Jennifer she Lawrence. She looks like an Egyptian actress from back in the early 1900s. Really? Mm-hmm. So they all bring back little things, doodads, and then go back to sleep. And then a different guy pops out. It could be. But St. Germain is like, he's their... Uh, he He's their... Uh, uh, what was that guy's name on... Uh, on the Godfather, Frito, Frito, the <laughs> I moron. Don't, I don't remember, but yeah. he's like their dumb guy. They can't get to shut up. He's like, oh, it's my turn. I'm going out. They're like, oh, damn it! Just like, can you please keep don't a low tell them where we live? You time. know, don't tell them where we live. I, you know, get on the phone up the guard staff. I know, I know. He's going out. He goes out. Oh, I'm here, and they're just like, shut up. What gets me though is his whole thing about revolving around. Louis the Fifteenth and his court hanging out with Pompadour. What if that was like his best timeline, though? His, it, it could have been his and best it, vacation. And they were so enamored with him because he could just do these magical things. And they're like, "How does he do it? Like how he?" They gave him a freaking chateau. Well, that's like during, <laughs> that's during the time when all that um, enlightenment had just kicked off. And alchemism was all the rage. Everyone thought about it, talked about it. And if he knew how to do it, you know, bam. And he is the Fredo or Frodo, Fredo, 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 Fredo. He is the Fredo of the group. Like anyone else would have come out and would have just been slippery in there. Maybe become, you know, like a Mozart type person or, you know, uh, yeah. an explorer or something or an inventor. But he comes out and he's got to be in everything. Yeah. It's like, I'm here to observe, but no, I'm here to party and have fun and mm -hmm. make a name for myself. And, and get on TV, you know, and all this other stuff. And then he's going to sleep back to their little ninja hiding cavern in the, <laughs> the volcano. Well, and some people don't say he's a vampire at all. Some people think he's actually a time traveler. Ooh. Ooh, like, uh, what was that guy's name? John Tudor. And one of the other names he went by was uh, James Fraser, Captain James Fraser. Um, so, I mean, he's got all these different names, yet all, they, they all link back together. This guy needs a much deeper dive done. This is wild. It's, yeah, it's pretty neat. And, I, you know, I only started it because I was like, well, it's Halloween, like vampire yeah. of New Orleans. Yeah. So let's see where this goes. No, it went deeper than New Orleans. There was so much more there. Oh, that is wild. That is, I mean, and they even said he had like his complexion was just different. It didn't look like everybody else. Like these are the people. Like he shimmered in the sun. Well, no, not like that. Like but maybe maybe a looked a little bit ashy, or you know, oh. under the weather. So he wasn't carrying a horrible actress up the top of the mountain to no. show her that he then got to live in in Washington <laughs> State so that. It's overclass and rainy all the time, so you don't see. And that's where the diamonds come from. Just picked them off his skin. Now <laughs> you really got into that, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, King says, "Clone of a clone." It has to be. Most angels look like UFOs. Now they do have that uh, biblical description of an angel, where it's wills and wills with eyes everywhere and feathers. Mm -hmm. Doesn't. Yeah, so there's nine, they call them choirs, nine choirs of angels, and that is one of the choirs. It's one of the upper the yeah. upper ones, and so these were the ones that actually came to Sodom and Gomorrah to destroy it. Yeah, I heard somewhere that cherubs, the little baby angels that shoot the love arrows, 
that they're actually one of the highest orders. Um, it's so it's not actually cherubs. It's cherubims are completely different. Oh, okay. Do um, go on. <laughs> but but yeah, it's there's the lowest order would be our guardian angels, and then it's like goes up to there's like the archangels, the miracle angels, um, and each each class has a different thing of what they protect. And the top three usually they stay in heaven, and they tell the lower six what to do. And the middle ones they communicate. It's, there's a whole thing. It's a chain of command. It's, it's, it's a, a whole chain of command. Politics. You don't want to. So there's th- an this HR is, angel over there. If you step outside of politics, you got to go over there. It's just a miserable meeting. Fill out the paper. Yeah, and so it. so the ones that are able to to do miracles. This is what I always tell people. There's Ed and Lorraine Warren. We know who they are, uh-huh. right? We should hold off on this one. I'm, I'm going to have you coming and do an <laughs> angel show. <laughs> okay, just breaking down angels for me. Well, I will, but 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 this is what's just interesting. So you have the miracle angels. Uh-huh. They can stop time. They can make things happen. Okay. So if you were like, I want it to rain over my house, they are able to control the weather. Like they can just make things happen. So, so now imagine that as a demon and you're going to have like Ed and Lorraine had a house in, in England where rocks were falling and it was only falling on that property, not the houses next door. Oh. And the police were actually watching it going, what in the, you know, so that's what I say. You can you can identify what you're dealing with based on what they're able to accomplish. Mm. So are there cherub demons, like little fat baby demons? Because <laughs> they're not like that. little bows and arrows. <laughs> now, no. are they either? Those are the ones that make you fall in love with the wrong person. Well, I mean, those don't exist. So oh. I mean, they exist, but not in angel. Like I said, there is cherubim. Cherubims what, are different than cherubs. So, what's the difference? I think, if I can remember, cherubs. I'm trying to think. I think they're like a type of Greek thing, like a like. What's the guy that has the goat pan? Feet, pan. So it's kind of like that. Like he's so they're he's a actually, they're actually a pan thing. They're not an angel thing. Yeah. So they're a pan. Like pan is its own thing, but it's sort of like yeah. that classification of. Yeah, Pan was kind of an early iteration of a nature god, and then he came around healthy again in the end, and and then, you know, but yeah, okay. And then they made him into Satan. <laughs> I thought that was a horrible thing they did, by the way, making him into Satan, like, because Pan always seemed like he was just a fun, loving nature deity, right? Yeah, and there's a whole thing now where they say Loki is actually God. I mean, there's just so many things you can go on about with... That's when you go into those uh, Gnostic religions, mm-hmm. those Gnostic Christians and, and uh, Cathars, you know, and things like that. I don't know. This is a fun show. Yeah. This, I'm going to have to look into this guy a little more. And now I'm going to have to look around and see what. Um, I mean, we obviously know Donald Trump's story is that Baron Trump is a time traveler. And, yeah, they saw that book, which I do have that book, and I made my parents read it. How wild is it? <laughs> it's pretty crazy. But it, does it tie in with Donald Trump at all? I mean, could I mean, it? do you think Donald Trump knows about this book? I yeah, who knows? I would think so because so many people but talk I mean, about. It. I mean, <laughs> but can you imagine if you're just like, hey, hey, Donald Trump, like me to you like so do you have the time traveling machine did your grandpa actually steal it yeah. from tesla like can i can i check it out yeah tell tell me about this you know <laughs> could you and send it's me back actually in not time? donald it's his son baron <laughs> mm-hmm. you know who uh, a guy named uh pence is his teacher or something it's just it's a wild yeah, story there's, there's so many things i think about that way too much in my head like If I could go back in time, because, you know, I've had so many surgeries for you you guys that don't know, like I have a scar literally Mm -hmm. from the top of my chest down to my pelvis. And I'm like, I could go back in time and say, I escaped a madman and look what he did to me. And I don't know who I am. And I would just be given so much because this poor girl, look at her. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Well, I, I mean, honestly, if you could go back in time, like on back to the future, just having an almanac. Mm-hmm. What could you do with just that? Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, he shows up where Marie Antoinette is and is like, let me have an ordinance with you because this is going to happen yeah. if you don't change your ways. 
Yeah. And then he's, why is he getting involved with the Jacobites? Why is he at the Declaration of Independence and, and with Catherine the Great and Prince Hesse? Like, there's so many weird things going out of this. And it's so wild because, I mean, Marie Antoinette, she really wasn't the evil Mm -mm. one. She never said, let them eat cake. No, she didn't. Not Um, many people know that. That's actually been recorded throughout history with many different people. What she did say is they're starving out there. And she said, let's get them cake. Mm -hmm. You know, let's get them food. Uh, She did a lot of work for for the poor and underclass there. And it was a twisted, ancient... Um, political religious molestation system where if you were a peasant the church stole half your money and the state stole the other half mm-hmm. and the state stole money through the church also which made it so the church was distrusted it was an yeah. awful system yeah it really was but that is wild and I the just, whole the whole thing that I think about too with that is if they hadn't have been helping us to fight England, I don't think it ever well, would have happened. No, okay. So the Seven Years' War. Mm-hmm. Seven Years' War. I think, yeah, Seven Years' War. Um, they they went bankrupt because of that. Uh, the war, our revolution was, um, was a little blip fart off in the corner of this war England and Spain and, Spain and Britain had against each other. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was... Yeah, it's just a little. It, yeah, it, it really didn't affect the coffers that much because they went to war against each other on the open seas forever because it was a time of growth and colonization. So, yeah. yeah. So they bankrupt each other. I mean, and all of them had major collapses because of that. It just took a little longer for some of them to fulfill. Yeah. France had a big collapse because of the Enlightenment because people looked at that church um, that was willing to let people starve. Also, they were in a big drought. That's usually the biggest part. No one ever talks about it because it's not the sexy part, but every revolution tends to have a drought or a famine that's tied to it, a big environmental yeah. impact. So, but that's wild. All right, we'll finish this out, but I want you to come back in. Of course. I want to talk angels and I want to talk demons. But I'll have to bring my note because if you can tell, if I don't have it on paper, my mind goes blank. Yeah, and I don't know how to write, so I don't put anything. <laughs> but I want to do it in two separate shows, angels in one, demons in another. Okay. And then you decide which one comes first because I want to interact between the two. But I think that is awesome that the layers of angels... Um, I want to know what the layers of demons look like. How does that all work? Well, you know, I mean, I've, I've been studying my Bible a lot lately because my, my dad has cancer, so mm-hmm. I have to, I'm trying to keep my spirit up. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I was just reading about how they were talking about Elijah has come back. He is John the Baptist. And I'm like, right there, that's reincarnation to me. John the Baptist was Elijah reborn. Mm-hmm. What if... What if and it a, says that Jesus says that. What if there's a new dude that's reborn again? Well, they they say that there's going to be two that come back that we've already known, and they believe it's either going to be um, Nicodemus, I think, is one, but they think it could also be Elijah, and then they also think Moses. So they're thinking it's going to be kind of those three that are going to be saying, "Here's Jesus coming back," because he's well, going Moses to come back. Well, Moses will to see recognize, him you know, when he parts an ocean. <laughs> like, oh. I know that dude. He comes yeah. back and he's a dam builder. Just saying, just throwing <laughs> it out there. But it, you know, the, I mean, that's that's why. I, yeah. And they talk about the chariot that comes from heaven. I I'll have to figure out where that is in the Bible. I believe that's in the Old Testament. But they're talking about how that. Somebody told me once, like they talked about the UFOs in the mm-hmm. Bible. Yeah. So, yeah. So there's lots of... Yeah, it crashed in Roswell. That was the chariot. Yeah. You know, that'd be awful. <laughs> that's, that's wild to think about. There's so much weird, just weird stuff. And, and, you know, you did talk about how, you know, yeah, I am a medium. I do. I've mm-hmm. seen things since I was a kid. I've seen angels. I've mm-hmm. seen demons. They're not fun. I don't want to mess with them. However, they are in my life. <laughs> See, me, one could come. I could get him one on either shoulder. I wouldn't recognize them. I've got no sensitivity to any of that stuff. So, you know. Well, we all do. It's our gut instinct. Anybody, who, I'm telling you, the guardian angel that got tossed at me 
He, he's just hoarse because he's been screaming <laughs> for 47 years. Isn't that awful? The other thing. day, I heard a woman, and my mom was sitting over here, and I was like, did, did you hear that? And she's like, no. And I was like, well, that's weird. And the next morning, I'm, you know, kind of in that I'm sleeping, not sleeping state. And it's, Sarah! And I'm like, damn it. I have to cleanse my house again. Really? See, I don't get any of that stuff. Yeah. I don't get any of that. Yeah, I, uh, you know. I just don't get, I, I have no perception. I'm, you know, I'm a new soul. Remember, I mean, my last iteration, I was like a house fly or, you know, maybe, I don't know. What's another interesting animal, a tardigrade. That'd be cool. But you know, that was, that was what I was in the previous life. And this is my first go around. I haven't learned nothing yet. Well, you know, we're then, always learning. We're and always then growing. some people, they're sensitive to all that stuff. I'm glad I'm not because. But is it because you've been here so long or is it because you're new? Because if you're new, maybe you're going to be closer to that side. Well, that could be. That could be. Maybe I am an old soul could be. who's gotten senile <laughs> and I have hearing loss. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. <laughs> all right. So we got to read these last comments. Uh, the difference is, okay, since the 80s, so he don't count. So Nicolas Cage has to be a vampire. He played one in a movie, and he still looks the same since the 80s. I have to say I loved Renfield. If you guys have not seen that, where he plays Dracula. Really? It is great. Renfield. I've never heard of it. Oh, yeah. It just came out this last year. The difference is one of them looks mechanical, while the other one looks like a four-legged hybrid human being with wings. He's talking about the the uh, UFOs. Mm -hmm. Penn gives you kids vibes because he wants children sacrifice his power as children just pure. Evil. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I do know that uh, Moloch and Ball has children sacrifice tied to them, which I think ties back to um, Carthage. And I also wonder, I, this came to me earlier on today because I did a chat with a guy from uh, Holland this morning, he's chatting with the guy. He talked about, imagine the apocalypse that the Native Americans went through after after uh, the Europeans first came over here and then left, and then a scourge spread through the nation and killed, you know, 70, 80% of the population. What if the Mexica, the, the Aztecs, um, what if they started the human sacrifice after that thinking gods the gods were mad at them could be because we don't know we don't know any of this stuff like uh the mound builders in 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 central america i mean if only they had writing you know yeah. but been... the thing is is like we know what we know and that's going to be very different from person to person let alone when you get a group of people who all say yes i know the same thing and it's just to them it's very real oh, or, oh, oh. to us it may be like why are you putting children inside a bull and lighting them on fire yeah. but to them they're like no this is very real this is yeah well i mean the aztecs well their name they were the mexica aztecs is the where they come from should call it arizona because that's my theory on that but the stories we have of their human sacrifice comes from approximately, like, I think it's 13 years after uh, Columbus first sailed mm -hmm. over here, went back, and then they started coming over. Um, what if the Aztecs started that human sacrifice gig because of all that death, that illness, the smallpox that killed everyone? Yeah. And they thought, the gods are mad at us. We better start up in the game. And, That's just and something so, different. So they start up in the game. They start out, okay, everyone has to bring in you know, 10% of your crop. Okay, they bring them in. Oh, that's not working. Okay, one of their delicacies, they eat bloodworms. Mm. I know, it sounds, they would fry them up there. Yummy. Anyways, you know, everyone's got to sacrifice their bloodworms. They had actual gardens of bloodworms. It's interesting when you read about it. But what if they just kept up in the game and then as smallpox finally retreated, they had upped it to the point of human sacrifice. And I go, oh, that did it. Yeah. And so... Now we keep doing it. That was their trait for, you know, the next until, you know, the conquistadors overthrew them. Yeah. Then there's the whole wormhole of, did we ever stop? Well, okay. Now, 
Yeah, we went into that one time. That's a Spicer <laughs> show. We're going to dig in. We're going to cover all the shows that we want to do tonight. But, no, that's an interesting one. We talked about that with uh, with uh, the worshiping of Baal and Moloch that the Carthaginians and the uh, Philistines did. Talking about that. And, you know, that can get spicy if you look at it relevant to current times. Mm -hmm. And that is not a politically correct show. No. All right. Uh, there was actually measurements that were, where were we at? Uh, Pan gives you kids by, okay, read that. There's actually measurements that were taken and eat temple was built, that were taken and eat temple was built. At each temple that Let's was built? At each. Yeah, at each temple that was built. Yeah. For the landing of the creature. Hmm. For the landing of the demon, the demon UFO. King uh, says, actually, the Aztecs, Mayans, and the Incans always said that the gods wanted sacrifice and that they had left recorded writings, but the books were burned. Well, okay. From my studying of it, uh, I don't know. I, the Incans had, the Aztecs, and the Inca, they all had that hieroglyphic type writing. Uh, the Mayans mostly did. The Incans did a little bit. The Aztecs had some recordings. Now there were, I think there's two or three books that exist out there. I don't own any of them because I imagine they're spendy, but Aztecs that were either, uh, people who were either children of Aztecs and Spaniards, you know, half Aztec, half uh, Conquistador, or Aztecs that converted to Catholicism and gained some leverage in the church that learned how to write and actually wrote those stories down. But they also don't know about um, about when the origination of human sac or they might, they just never mention it, at least not that I've seen. But maybe they did human sacrifice forever. I mean, that might have been their thing. We do know the Aztecs. When they came into the Valley of Mexico City, they came in super poor with nothing. Um, and the, the around the island or, or around the, the lake there, it was already all populated except for this one marshy area. And they were kind of like the trailer trash that moved into town and everyone's like, you get away from here. But they were hired on as military for these other groups. So they would be mercenaries for them, which made them uh vaunted forces but they built this floating island complex that had their gardens floated on water it's it's amazing what they did yeah. but and you know they came from a place called aztecia um they called themselves mexica and they came south from aztecia and then if you're like me and you like getting all weird on it you read into it and you're like oh you know where did it's, that's the whole point, right? As we dive yeah. deeper and deeper down. Yeah. Like, what if they're the uh, ancient Arizona tribes? Maybe. Could be crazy. But, anyways, thanks for joining us. It's a fun show. Uh, I don't know when we'll be back on. <laughs> I don't. Hopefully, I can con her into doing it soon because I really miss doing this stuff. Uh, but we do need to talk about... Uh, the alien stuff going on of course i want to dig into angels and demons and sarah is uniquely capable of doing that because uh well she studies it on both sides and i think she studies it on one side and has experienced it on the other is the best way to put it yeah. and thanks for joining us uh king good to see you again man it's been uh way too long like six months eight months something like that and but yeah, say goodbye, Sarah. <laughs> goodbye, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys Bye. later. That was fun.